I just finished installing my solar and supporting systems into my 2021 Casita Heritage 17 foot deluxe. And I'd love to show you guys around, but first off, why install the solar? Well, install solar and the supporting systems allow us to boondock longer and camp without needing electricity at our campsites. I'll start with the different components and why they're important and finish up with the solar install. A battery monitor is important to know exactly how much battery you have used. It also gives you the state of charge and how long you can currently run on your existing load given your battery size. Comes out right here, comes across the ceiling, further across the ceiling in here. To the corner, comes out here, down this wire run, into the space behind the converter, and then it was a quick hop over here behind the wheel well to our shunt, connects right here. The DC to DC charger is needed because the voltage of my lithium batteries are higher than my car battery. So when I connect the trailer to my vehicle, the trailer battery would actually try to charge the car battery and potentially damage the car battery in addition to draining my trailer battery. This device isolates the two systems so that can't happen, in addition to taking a lower voltage from the car and increasing it to charge the trailer battery. The model I got also had something called engine detection, so it only tries to charge when the engine is on. This enables me to leave my vehicle connected to the trailer for a long period of time even overnight or longer without worrying about draining my car battery. So this large cable here is what I ran, it's eight gauge. I just connected into the spots where uh, the trailer um, seven pin comes in and then just taped off the existing connection there. Ran that completely around the, the outside of the, of the bathroom, kind of around here, and then it popped out. Popped out in this corner right there ran on along, along these baseboard prote wire protectors there of course over to my DC to DC charger that I've mounted over here and setting up the DC to DC charger I also installed this relay that I mounted right there. That, only, that enables me to detect when the tow vehicle's plugged in. And I can turn on this uh, antenna, uh, our tire pressure monitor system relay and our rear backup camera, which normally is down like that. I replaced the Casita WFCO8955 converter with the Wildcat to support my lithium iron phosphate batteries. These batteries need 14.2 to 14.6 volts of bulk and absorption to get fully charged. The Casita converter only supplies 13.6 volts for absorption, so it only charged my new batteries to 80% or so. Wildcat also had a jumper on it allows me to switch between charging lead acid slash AGM batteries or lithium batteries. It also changed with it came with a charger pendant that allows me to change profiles as needed. The batteries are the heart of any good system in an RV, especially a solar system. Having a bunch of space underneath the bunk beds enables me to still store camping chairs and other things here, but also two 100 amp hour battle borne lithium iron phosphate batteries created some um, mounts for them 
in this space. It still allows the wires to go underneath part of it on both sides. Put the battery up high. I did decide to get heated batteries um, because I do camp in cold weather. The solar charge controller is responsible for taking the variable and higher voltage from the solar panels and reducing it to the voltage suitable for the battery. If the battery is full, it will turn off the panels and monitor the battery to keep as fully charged as possible. It can work in conjunction with the DC to DC to charger while driving down the road to more quickly charge the trailer battery. I end up running the cables through this gray tank vent right here. I used VHB tape to hold the legs down. I covered them with, filled them with decor and then added Eternabond tape as extra strength and uh, weathering uh, an extra protection from the elements. This is where all the wires come in. I run them all in parallel. You see up top, goes around to the other side. For extra security, I added some marine cord to connect the solar panels together and to some other tie-in points such as the front vents on the casita. So if the tape ever does fail, I won't be damaging any property or hurt any people. When I ran the wires for my DC to DC charger, I also decided to run some 10 gauge wire here around for a future solar install. So I ended up running that along the lines of this gray vent piping up the side here all the way up got mc4s right here and then i drilled a hole in the vent and fed the wires through there and covered all that up with decor for weatherproofing keep bugs out i don't think there's too much water that's going to get in there but just in case solar wires Ran the same way as my eight gauge wire for my DC to DC charger around the bathroom. Comes out over here, makes its way right over here to this breaker where I can easily turn the panels on, off or back on and then connects to my solar charge controller, which is mounted right here. For every 100 watt hours I collect of solar in a day, my battery gets charged about 7 amp hours. In this example, I gained 100 amp hours of charge back onto my battery.